In 2003, when The Matrix was first introduced, Toyota was really hoping that it would appeal to a younger, more hip group of people that wanted the practicality of a hatchback and a car that was based on the very popular Corolla. But it didn't work out that way. It was aging baby boomers that bought up the lion's share of Matrix cars. Young and hip, no, more like round and soft. A perfect car for you, Zach. Oh, nice. <laughs> this is the all-new 2009 second-generation Toyota Matrix. It's here to make a bold statement and hopefully attract some younger buyers. You know which car has been attractive to younger buyers? The Mazda 3. Ever since it was introduced, it's been selling like hotcakes, and Toyota would love to steal away some of those young buyers. You know what? This car was introduced earlier this year, and ever since it came out, it's been selling well. So something's working. Well, the average age right now is estimated over 50 years old, but with the new model, we anticipate on bringing that back down into the 35 or 40 year old range. In order to attract younger buyers, Toyota wanted to shift from practical to emotional with a more powerful, longer and lower stance and a coupe like exterior. In fact, the head designer wanted to design a car that would be recognizable from 400 meters away. I was sitting at the vantage point at, uh, near Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, it was about 400 meters away from the bridge, and uh, I was looking at, I found only the, the vehicle I could notice was, well, obviously a pickup truck, so you can know, but as a car, it was only Volkswagen vehicle, uh, Beetle. I think that the silhouette of the vehicle would be very important to be noticeable 400 meters away. Colonel, when I look at the test track and keep looking at far away, I think I achieved it. Yes, I did, definitely, yes. One small complaint about the new Matrix, Toyota decided to get rid of the rear window back here. Now, honestly, I think it does make the vehicle look a little cooler and sportier, but unfortunately, without having that window back here, it does create a bit of a blind spot. This tasty unit is the base model with wheel covers on 16-inch wheels, but much chunkier versions are available like 17 or 18-inch alloys. The top-of-the-line performance-oriented version is the XRS with added spoiler, fog lights, and XRS badging. Just like the original, the Matrix has a functional wipe-down cargo area with folding seats. There's some nice standard features on the Matrix as well. You get a height-adjustable driver's seat, plus the phone they use in the seats is very comfortable, so it's a nice place to spend some time. Also, you get tilt and telescopic steering wheel. You get an auxiliary jack for your MP3 player or an iPhone, and you can also opt if you upgrade and get Bluetooth connectivity. Now, the other thing is there's lots of nice storage in here. Big cup holders in the center, place to put your bottle in the door. The center console has been nicely upgraded. It doesn't look inexpensive. This car starts at under $16,000, but it looks more expensive. If you want to get a full list of specs and trim levels, go to our website. We mentioned earlier that the Mazda 3 was very popular with the younger generation, and I really think part of that reason is the fact that it was available with two engine options. So if you want to get something that's a little bit more powerful or spirited, you had the choice. Well now, Toyota has responded, and the Matrix is available with two choices of engines. The base 1.8 liter motor has more power and torque than the outgoing model at 132 horsepower and 128 pound-feet of torque. To shake things up further, they've added a 2.4 liter four-cylinder with 158 horsepower and 162 pound-feet of torque. Even though we have the base model matrix and it has the smaller engine, it's still really peppy to drive, even with the automatic transmission. The base transmission is a 5-speed manual in the front-wheel drive and sportier versions with the larger engine. A 4-speed automatic is the transmission offered with the 1.8-liter engines and a 5-speed auto with the 2.4-liter option. One thing that I really like about driving the Matrix is just how comfortable it is. The seats sit up a little bit higher so you've got great outward visibility, there's no blind spots, and everything is very well placed and easy to use. I wasn't a big fan of the dash-mounted shifter, but as I got used to it, it just makes sense. It's just right there, exactly where you need it. It's back, baby. That's right, all-wheel drive. The Matrix used to have all-wheel drive, then they dropped it towards the end of the model cycle for the previous model, but now it's back because they have that larger 2.4-liter four-cylinder engine. Makes sense, a little extra running gear to carry around, and you can get better performance out of that engine.
I had a chance to drive the XRS version when the Matrix was first introduced, and even though it has more power, it isn't that much more impressive to drive. Sure, it has better passing power and mid-range torque, but around town, the base model does a good job. Traction and stability control are standard on the 2.4 liter version, but all the airbags, four-wheel disc brakes with ABS are standard on all Matrix. Now we asked the chief engineer about the Matrix and why they only put in a four-speed automatic with the 1.8 liter four-cylinder engine. And he said because of its new lighter, more compact design and the gearing, the car is actually able to achieve better gas mileage. And this is surprising when all the other manufacturers seem to be going to five-speed automatics. With the 1.8 liter engine, the Matrix gets 8.1 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 6.2 on the highway. That works out to 35 miles per gallon in the city and 46 on the highway. The 2.4 liter gets 9.7 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 6.9 on the highway. That works out to 29 miles per gallon in the city and 41 on the highway when equipped with an automatic transmission. Here's some good Canadian pride. This car is made in Cambridge, Ontario, and it's a joint venture with General Motors. They have a version of this car called the Pontiac Vibe, which is made in the United States. Buy one of these cars, support the Canadian economy. Now, the thing about this car, it is a very pleasant car to drive. I would be quite happy to drive something like this every day, especially with the smaller engine. I think it does everything admirably. The bigger engine and the more responsive XRS version is more fun to drive, but it still isn't quite as fun as, say, the Mazda 3 with their larger 2.3 liter engine and we haven't even had a chance to drive the new Mazda 3 coming out soon. So this car will probably appeal to younger buyers but it's still going to hit that lion's share of baby boomers that want a practical easy to drive car. Well, Zach, this 2009 Matrix now has more standard features. There's two engine options and all-wheel drives available again. Do you think it's a compelling package? Absolutely. And you know what I like about this car, and I think I'm going to surprise some people when I say this? I like the smaller 1.8-liter engine. And the four-speed automatic, the one we have here, this base car, it does a very commendable job of moving people around. It's functional, it's practical, and it's more efficient. So that's definitely a plus. Also, the ride of the car in combination with those comfortable seats I mentioned makes it a really nice place to spend some time. And our director and I drove in this car. He has the previous model. And the first thing he said when he drove in it, it's so much quieter than the previous model. And that's a plus. The other thing is now all-wheel drives back on the table. That's good news for Canadians in our slippery winter conditions. On the downside, the interior can scratch a little bit. The lower part of the dash has that harder plastic and also the plastic on the inside of the cargo area scratches as well. And the other thing is this package is being designed to appeal to young and hip people, but I still think it's appealing to the same people that want an economical, practical car. Well, you know what, Zach? That's something I actually like about it. It is very practical and that back storage area is great. It's very usable. You can wipe it down so you get it dirty it's easy to take care of I like the new styling taking out that extra window I think actually did give it a little bit more of a sportier look and I think it's great that they've got two engine options to choose from this year on the downside honestly there really wasn't a lot that stuck out that I didn't like about this car so you really liked it I liked it you know Zach I was kind of thinking about what you said about it not being young and hip enough I mean maybe it's uh, not the car that's uh, not hip enough then how come you keep hanging around with me? For complete specs, go to our website at drivingtelevision.com.